Cubers, we can agree on three things. J Firm is the coolest Canadian we all know, Gan Cubes are overpriced, and thirdly, solving the Rubik's Cube blindfolded is flippin' amazing. I realized these three things about a year ago, and I realized I'm not Canadian, I already have Gan Cubes, so that left me with one last option. I was gonna solve the 3x3 Rubik's Cube blindfolded. So I started as any cuber would. I looked up tutorials and followed them as closely as I could, but nothing ever seemed to quite click for me. Everything seemed just out of reach and I never thought I would actually be able to do this. So I gave up. That was until about two months ago when I realized, Josh, just stop being a pansy and learn already. And that is exactly what I did. But even with this newfound motivation, I didn't know where to get started. But I did know someone who did. I went over to world record holder Tommy Cherry's YouTube channel and commented on one of his videos. I just said, hey Tommy, I'm trying to learn blindfolded. Are there any good tutorials or any good methods that you would suggest getting started with? And he responded by saying, the old Pokemon method is the best for getting started. And here's a really good tutorial. And he sent me the link. I then spent the next hour, hour and a half just trying to get my mind around this new method and it was actually pretty simple. All of a sudden, all of my goals, all of my dreams, all seemed possible. In case you're unfamiliar with the old Pokemon method, I'll give you a quick rundown. In the old Pokemon method, each piece has a letter assigned to it. So for edges, we have A, B, C, D, and then you have the continuing alphabet going all around the cube. But then with the corners, it follows the same principle, A, B, C, D. The reason you can use the same letters for both edges and corners is because you end up solving them separately. Now the way you solve the cube is with this piece right here called the buffer. I position my buffer in between the yellow and orange centers, but you can really put it anywhere. I just find that's the most convenient place. But the main principle is that this piece right here, specifically this sticker on your right, will switch with this sticker right here on the opposite side using the T-perm algorithm. So for example, we have this blue sticker here and this yellow sticker here. And after doing a T-perm, you can see that they've switched. So the way we're gonna use that principle is with looking at where this piece needs to go. This is the yellow and blue edge, which means it needs to be positioned in between the yellow and blue centers. Specifically, this blue sticker needs to go here. So if we know that this piece and this piece switch, if we can move the blue edge or the blue sticker on the blue and yellow edge into the switching position and then undo all the setup moves, it'll solve the edge. I'll, I'll show you what I mean real quick. So if we move the blue edge into this piece right here and then do a T-perm algorithm and then undo those setup moves, it's solved now. It takes a lot of getting used to, but that's the main principle. You'll then do that on all of the edges and then follow a trail of letters, making words with the letters you make. Now that probably didn't make sense, but I'm just gonna keep going. And trust me, the tutorial makes it so much more clear, but the main principle stays the same throughout the corners. However, you're switching these two pieces using the Y perm algorithm. So with this, we have the blue, orange, and white corner, which needs to go down here. And the sticker on top, which we'll be switching with this piece right here, C, is blue. So if we move this blue sticker here, we have this, do a Y perm, move that back, undoing the setup moves, and it's now solved. I know none of that probably made sense, but just trust me again, the tutorial makes it so much easier. Now back to the part of the video that actually makes sense. This is where things started to take a toll on me. I would try for 15 minutes to memorize and execute my solution, but when you take off that blindfold and see you're not even close, it hits you so hard that you don't even want to keep going. This is where I completely agree with my mom. I am not like the other kids. When others would have given up or lost all hope, I kept trying. I kept pushing through. I was going to reach this goal. The day was February 12th, 2023, and after almost 20 failed attempts, this happened. Oh, let's go. Oh, let's flipping go, dude. Oh my goodness. I just did that. Oh my, oh, I finally did it. Let's go. Oh 
my goodness. Let's go. It was over 10 minutes, so I didn't get the exact time, but I can pop it up right here. Let's go. Awesome, dude. That makes me so happy. That makes me so happy, dude. Oh, let's go. After over a year of work, it feels so good to finally reach my goal. I will look back at that moment when I took off the blindfold as one of the most rewarding moments of my life. And don't get me wrong, this accomplishment is amazing, but that's not why I made this video. I made this video as an invitation for you to start blind solving. Take that first step and learn. I have the tutorial that I learned that Tommy Cherry shared with me down in the description, so make sure to go follow that and let me know if it actually works for you. Make solving a 3x3 blindfolded a goal for yourself and make sure to solidify that goal by smashing the subscribe button. Anyway, let me know how it all works out for you. I hope I can help at least one person. Anyway, we'll see you in the next one. Peace.